guys, so I'm kind of in a talking mood today, so I figured that I would come on here and do my makeup again with you guys. Got my little pick-me-up. Anyways, I am in a talking mood about kind of a random subject, but not really. Um... I'm going to talk to you guys about my obsession with <laughs> Titanic. I've always been obsessed with Titanic ever since I was a little girl. Well, not a little girl. I would say like when I was probably 13, 14, probably at a time when I shouldn't be watching Titanic. Because, <laughs> you know, that scene. But, um, uh, I saw it in 3D, guys, and... I think it is still playing. If you guys want to see it like last minute in your theaters, if it is playing in your theaters, I highly recommend it. It's not like, it's not the type of action 3D like where, cause I've never really cared for movies in 3D. I didn't like, and I was kind of skeptical about even seeing Titanic in 3D, but it's nothing like action movies where something jumps at, out at you and it's like literally in your face and everything's kind of disor disoriented and it's hard to like focus on the thing that you're trying to focus on. It was more so like the people were enhanced. And, like, objects that were underneath the water were kind of more enhanced. And I also find 3D movies kind of annoying because I need glasses. And it's, it does get blurry sometimes, like, when I have to take my glasses off to put the 3D glasses on. But honestly, I didn't even really need my glasses, my regular glasses, for um, this movie. Because the faces were, like, just... Um, very enhanced, very kind of out there, but again, not like annoyingly out there. But yeah, I have been obsessed with Titanic since I was young. I remember I even had a poster of Titanic. <laughs> Um, the one of Leo and Kate where the Titanic, the ship itself is like behind them and um, Jack is holding Rose from behind, like his arms kind of wrapped around her neck a little bit. Very romantic. <laughs> um... But it wasn't even Jack and Rose's, like, romance that I liked about Titanic. I soon fell in love with, like, the actual ship and the actual people that were on Titanic. Um, I mean, just think about all those people who died and how scary that must have been. I just still, to this day, can't fathom it. And it's so weird, eerie that the ship that is underwater right now are people's graveyard. Now, I am kind of superstitious. Like, I do believe in spirits and energy. Um, I remember there was a time where they wanted to raise the Titanic from the water. And even I was like, no. That's like going into a pharaoh's tomb and getting cursed. <laughs> like, no. I'm not, I'm not doing that. Like, I'm sure if that happened, something worse than COVID would have came along. <laughs> okay, I'm over-exaggerating. That was probably a little offensive. But like, do you know what I mean? That's a really sacred place. I just think that they should be happy with the things that they found now. 
and call it a day. Like, leave the, leave the site alone. Like, we've seen all the pictures we could see of the Titanic underwater. Um, I don't think we can really go further into the ship itself without getting hurt. Or even, like, the camera being damaged. Yeah, I don't know why I'm so enthralled with the, with the Titanic. I think it's more so like, you know, a part of us probably does want to go back in time and like fix it. Like save all those people from drowning. Of course, I've like watched and read all of the conspiracy, conspiracy theories that are about, that are on the Titanic. Um, like some people believe that, okay, she's just a ship that hit an iceberg and went under. I think there's a lot more to it. I really do. Because it's the fact that it could have been prevented. Um, and it really could have. I sadly think that they were just lazy on the safety protocols and like the drill you know because I've been on cruise ships and now like everyone has to go into a lobby for an hour before everyone before we take off because they go through all the safety procedures and they have you like Put on your life vest, make sure that you know how to put your life vest on, and they take you to the lifeboats and show you, like, what would happen if a, if a disaster did occur, and, like, how to get on the lifeboat and what to expect. They were just very, very unprepared. But I really wouldn't go on cruises anymore just because um, I think I have watched the Titanic too much. And I have seen Poseidon, the 2006 movie, the one with Emmy Rossum and I forget who else was in it. I mean, and I don't know why people honestly hate on that movie. It was actually a pretty good and decent movie. Um, would that ever happen? Probably not. <laughs> I mean, if you're stuck on a ship, you're stuck on a ship, and there's no getting out. And, like, everyone else died. <laughs> Spoiler alert, everyone else on the ship dies, and only six or seven survive. <laughs> So, like, that part is a little bit unrealistic, but, I mean, all in all, I did think that the movie was pretty good. You also have to wonder, too, the survivors of the Titanic, you know, like, what they heard and witnessed while watching the ship just, I mean, that must have been terrifying alone, is to just watch the ship go down and literally there's nothing you can do about it. You're just watching a thousand people die. 1,800 might I add. Yeah, I think it was 1,800 who died. 700 were saved and only six were saved from the icy waters. And I have my thoughts on who should have lived and who should have died. Um, like, especially in the movie-wise. <laughs> like, Mr. Esme. 
you know, he was definitely at fault. I think he had too much faith in a ship to say that, like, not even God can sink the ship. That's where karma comes in, buddy. God was probably like, oh, really? No, I don't really think so. I don't want to get, like, religious and say that God sunk the ship because I don't know if I really believe that he would do that. Um, but yeah, they were just so cocky when it came to, like, oh, this ship can never sink and... Even Mr. Andrews wasn't that naive. One of the most heartbreaking scenes in the Titanic is Mr. Andrews. I loved him. He was so nice and... Like, he told one lady to put her life belt on and she was like, and I was like, if Mr. Andrews tells you to put a life belt on, you put a life belt on and quit being such a Karen, okay? <laughs> I don't know if you guys caught that part when the Karen was just like, oh, well, why do I need to put a life jacket on? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, so I did get a few new brushes. I got um, Morphe N332 brush. It's just like a, and I really like this. I don't know why a lot of people hate on Morphe brushes. I mean, I kind of know why, because I heard that they do um, fray after a while when you wash them a lot. So we'll see. We shall see. I know it looks all weird right now, but trust the process. I actually like the process of contouring. But yeah, one of the conspiracy theories for Titanic is that they, that that actually wasn't Titanic to begin with. It was, um, Britannia or something like that. And Britannia is the one that's supposed to be, you know, still, or was still standing, um, but actually, nope, they, they switched the, they switched the names or something like that, which I don't know why. And I love seeing Titanic 2 because it was my grandmother's very first time seeing Titanic. I went and saw it with my grandmother and she is 78 years old and she's never seen Titanic before. And she liked it. She said it was a lot better than what she had expected because her whole thing was always like I don't want to watch you know a thousand people die which I don't you know I don't blame her but there's a lot there's a lot more to like the movie than just watching the ship sink sink <laughs> so yeah I'm thinking if my Barnes and Nobles has it um I might go to Barnes and Noble today and get the Lego set for the, um, the big, huge, um, Titanic ship. I guess I'm giving myself a little mustache, but it's not going to stay there. These are the A3 sponges from... Amazon and to be honest I like them a lot better than the um 
This one's really dirty. Then the Real Techniques. This is a lot softer and this is a lot um, harsher. And I feel like with the Real Techniques, you really have to like pounce it on your face to get any sort of blend. Where with this one, you don't really have to work that hard. And these are cheap. These are like, what, four bucks? Four bucks on Amazon, which I think is great. Okay. I've already got 17 minutes. I gotta not hurry, but I don't want this video to be too, too long. I had a weird dream last night too. I had a weird dream that um, I hung out with one of my favorite actresses, um, Lana Perea, <laughs> or Perea, I think is how you correctly pronounce it. She was the evil queen on um, Once Upon a Time, who's like one of my favorite uh, characters. Does it make my lips look bigger? The contouring, or does it just make it look like I have a mustache? Highlighter. Oh yay, they work now. Okay, good. So my mom, bless her heart, um, everything's going under like renovation right now with my room. She took my tray um, full of like highlighter compacts and this was in the tray as well. Um, and she measured it <laughs> with my new drawers that we're gonna put in in my new bathroom. And it's been raining like crazy, you know? We've been getting a ton of storms here in California and she was going out of town. Well, she accidentally left this and a bunch of other stuff um, in the construction like zone and so when it rained everything like raised see how like bubbly that looks like there's water in here probably still and it's really heavy now and the magnetic well this one does but to the, the other one it doesn't work anymore so but thankfully these powders work so if i go through like my fenty beauty and my okra highlighters hopefully they won't be too much destroyed because i don't have to tell you guys what Fenty beauty highlighters cost <laughs> they're um they're pretty pricey and i about died when i saw that they were out of their like home i was like mom what did you do and she's like i'm sorry I'm going to use some of my Tara Moon Cosmetics today with the new. I do believe that California will be the first to go under in a natural disaster. I don't know. Just ignore me. Um, my wonderful Koyonad I saved because I was like, these are not going in a box. Um, no. These are too precious. I don't know what this one is called, but I'm gonna go in 
I know this may seem a little weird, but bear with me. This shade is like royalty or something like that from Cleo Red. Now this one is Terra Moons. But I want just a brighter, just a slightly brighter color on the lid. Did you guys hear that? I don't know if it's out in Sephora yet, but oh my gosh, House Labs is coming to Sephora. I don't know what that was and my voice just cracked of excitement. That they put her in uh, Sephora just because like Sephora isn't, it's not my go-to places to go um, when it comes to shopping, but I will for Gaga. Carry my, carry my, no, carry my poker face. She's got me like nobody. Okay, guys, so this is the eye look. I'm gonna do everything else off camera just so that it doesn't get too long of a video, and I will be right back. Okay, back, guys, we are back with the final look. I just used a bunch of Cleonad Cosmetics on my eyes. I used a lot of um, Benefits on my eyes because I like to use my Benefits um, contour because I'm trying to use it up for Project Pan. But yeah, this is the final look. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Oh, I also use the Terra Moon Cosmetics, excuse me, neon in blue, although it looks more kind of pastel. And what I did was I just took a Cleonad shimmer in the crease and some shimmer on the lid. It looks a little bit more gold than what I would like it to be. I wanted it to be more of like an iridescent blue than gold, but it's still really pretty because blue and gold does complement each other really well. But anyways, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, thank you for watching, and if you want to, please subscribe. Of course, you don't have to, and give this video a thumbs up. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!